Hi, this is uh, Mrs. Hendrickson. Uh, and right now I'll be walking you through uh, an example where we are tracing recursion when the recursive method calls itself twice. So tracing recursion with two recursive calls. So if you look at this example code, um, you'll see that we've defined a recursive method called missed that gets passed an integer value x. It's got two base conditions, and then it's gonna return the sum of two subsequent calls to uh, itself. So in the end, what we're gonna do through this presentation is determine what the value is returned by a call when you pass six to missed. So to answer this question, we're going to trace through the calls we're going to, and we're going to take it one step at a time. Uh, we're also going to follow a certain pattern of execution because Java executes statements from left to right. So that's how we will approach the trace through these recursive calls. So when Java looks at this particular line right here, return missed x minus 2 plus missed x minus 1, Java is going to process this missed x minus 2 to completion and then go on and make the call to missed x minus 1. And that's the way we're going to actually trace through this. Uh, the method as defined has two base conditions, one of which is when x is less than or equal to 0 and will return 0 in that case. And the second is when x is less than or equal to 3. If neither base case is met, missed will recursively call itself first with missed x minus 2 second time with missed x minus 1. so let's go ahead and get started so when we look at this to trace through it and answer the question you'll take one step at a time so we're going to start first with this call to missed 6. so we're going to first trace the initial call to missed passing 6 as the value for x this will create activation record 1 on the stack. You can see in my activation record, I have uh, six being passed as the value for x. In this case, x does not, this value of six does not meet either base condition. So missed will end up calling missed x minus two, which you can see here as missed four, and then missed x minus one, which you can see here as missed five. Since Java processes left to right, so will we. So we're going to complete this call path, missed four, and then we'll go on to missed five. So we're going to create activation record two in this call to missed four. It's going to pass four as the value for X. It will not meet either of the base conditions. So we'll end up executing the last statement here, calling missed with X minus two and then missed with X minus one or missed two and missed three. So again, we're gonna follow the, we're processing left to right. So we're gonna complete this call to missed two before we go on. Uh, when missed two is called, it'll create activation record three, passing two as the value for X. The base condition X less than or equal to two is met. So this method will return the value of x to the calling method. So it's going to return 2, which Java will put right in the place of this missed 2 here. When activation record 3 uh, returns, it is removed from the stack. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll want to follow the path for missed 3. So you can see here, we called down up the left-hand side we replaced our call to miss two with the value of two. Now we're calling miss three. Miss three creates a new activation record, number three, because that's the next in the sequence, passing three as the value for X. This meets the base condition X less than or equal to three. So it's gonna return the value of X or three to the calling method, which is here specified in activation record two. When this version of MIST returns, activation record three is removed from the stack as that value is returned into the MIST uh, call identified in activation record two. So now you can see here, the, the return of the value to activation record two completes this method. 
I have followed the stack for my first call to mist and my second call to mist. Now it's ready to return the sum two plus three to activation record one. So two plus three will replace the call to mist four as Java works through the statements processing from left to right. AR2 will be removed from the stack on the return of the value to AR1. And then we're going to follow MIST5 to keep going. So you can see here I've placed 5 in my activation record, which is consistent with what Java will do as it processes it. Um, the call to MIST5 will create activation record 2 uh, with the value of 5 being passed for X. X equal five doesn't meet either of the base conditions. So it's gonna end up calling missed X minus two or three and missed X minus one or four. So we're gonna follow the execution of the left-hand side. Uh, so we're now gonna follow the execution of missed three to its end. When you call missed three from activation record two, it'll create activation record three, passing three as the value of X. Three does meet the base condition, X less than or equal to three. So it's gonna return the value of X to the calling routine. So this is gonna replace this missed three call with this value. And when it returns into activation record two, um, this version of missed will disappear from the stack. So we've, Replace this. Now let's complete this and follow the execution of missed four. So you can see I've put three in here. Now I've called missed four. It creates activation record four for this version of missed. X is four. Um, four does not meet either base condition. So it's going to end up calling missed X minus two or two and missed X minus one or three. So again, we're going left to right. So we're gonna complete missed two to the end before we go to missed three. So calling missed with two creates activation record four, passing two as the value for X. Two meets the base condition, X is less than or equal to three. So it's gonna return uh, the value of X to the calling routine. When it returns, it will remove activation record three from the stack. This is part of our unrolling back out. Um, once that's completed, we've completed the call for miss two and we're ready to handle the right-hand side call. So uh, when miss three is executed, it'll create a new activation record passing three as the value for X. Three does meet the base condition, X less than or equal to three. And so it'll return the value of X to the calling routine. When it returns the value, activation record four will be removed from the stack. So it now we've completed both calls in activation record three. So we have the value of two from the first call and the value of three from the second call. And activation record three, that missed, is gonna return the sum of these. So it'll return the sum of two and three to the calling routine, which is activation record two. When, it, when this version returns, activation record three will be removed from the stack. So once it returns, you'll see that it completes both calls in activation record two. Activation record two can now return the value of three plus five to its calling method, which was activation record one. So the value three plus five will replace the call to missed five. When AR2 returns to AR1, it will remove AR2 from the stack. So now we've completed both calls in AR1. AR1 can now re return the value of five plus eight to the method that called it, which is this call right here, missed six. When AR1 returns, we're returning from our first and last call to missed, and it will remove AR1 from the stack. So here we are with the final answer. What is returned from a missed, from missed six? The value is 13, which is the correct answer. So uh, hopefully this helps you understand how to process uh, 
multiple recursions within a recursion method, always process left to right in the same manner that Java does. Please let me know if you have any questions and uh, see you in class.